Welcome to episode 1 of a series of tutorials on Stormworks Lua. And I mean to emphasize on Stormworks Lua because it does differ in some ways from regular Lua. This episode will hopefully get everyone up to speed on the basics so we can get into some more advanced things in future episodes. And before you skip ahead to the next episode where we do fun things like drawing to the screen, make sure you really do understand the fundamentals covered in this video or you will likely get lost. I will also be linking the Lua manual in the description below, so make sure to take a look through that when you need some help. Just remember, not all of Lua is implemented into Stormworks. Now, let's get into the basics. So, let's say you want to set up a custom fuel tank with multiple fuel pumps controlling the fuel flow. Here I have set up nearly exactly that. So this is a custom fuel tank, it's an enclosed space, it has a fuel spawner for diesel, and then over here, I have a fluid meter measuring the fluid level in the tank and the fluid capacity of the entire tank. These values come over to this microcontroller. And you can see the fuel tank amount and fuel tank capacity come in here. And then four values come out. Pump one, on off, pump two, on off, pump three, on off, and pump four, on off. Now I'm just having them go to the lights, but just pretend they're pumps. In the microcontroller, you can see I have the fuel tank amount and capacity coming in here and they get written from numbers to a composite signal and they go into this little block. This little block comes out to four composite reads for on offs and those go to the pumps as I showed outside and the video comes down here. But we'll get to that in the next episode when we're drawing to the screen. If I open the little block, you can see the default code and this is where our Lua script is going to go. Now while it is possible to code in this in-game editor, I highly suggest using this website made by Crazy Fluffy Pony that has plenty of useful features. I use it all the time, and will be using it for these tutorials as well. It also has documentation specifically on Stormworks Lua, which is definitely worth a look. The link to the site and a tutorial on how to use it is in the description. Now, let's learn about Lua. Lua has multiple data types in order to represent, that's right, different types of data. Starting with nil, which is literally nothing, it is not defined as being anything but nothing. Stoneworks Lua has an interesting behavior involving nils and values, but I'll explain this more later. Next is bools, which are just true or false, which can be thought of as being on or off, which is what the game calls them outside of Lua scripts. We also have numbers that are saved as floats, which is the technical way of saying they're decimal numbers, meaning they always have decimals even when set to a whole number. There are also strings that are like strings of characters that form text. Finally, there are tables, which act like arrays in other languages. These are very useful, and we'll get into them more next episode. Now, going back to what I was talking about earlier, if you were to ask this script to print state, the script would look for a variable named state and find nothing, so it would return nil. However, if you were output a bool called state, Stoneworks Lua will automatically assign this non-existent variable the value of false. And if you try outputting a non-defined number, it will default to zero. This behavior is important to note, as it can cause issues, say, if you were trying to test if your RC car is connected by checking if the battery is greater than or equal to zero. It would always be true, as even when not connected, that number channel would default to zero. Syntax is basically the certain characters that construct and form certain languages. So commenting in Lua requires you to follow the syntax of two dashes. Or, if you want to do a multi-line comment, two dashes, two left square brackets, and then two right square brackets to end the comment. If you misspell something that results in the script failing, you have made a syntax error. Congrats, you'll make many. Now, you're about to learn a bunch of syntaxes, but it is good to know what syntax means. Variables are able to be assigned a value and they will remember it for later. So if you say car equals Ford, and then ask the IDE to print car, it will print Ford. You can also assign it any of the other value types like numbers or bools. There are two types of variables, global and local. By default, all variables are global unless otherwise specified, but I'll cover local variables later in this video. 
Operators are used all the time and are often used to compare two values and return a result. However, there are exceptions to this. Starting with the most common ones, the ones you've used time and time again, arithmetic operators. These include addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. And there's also modulo, which returns the remainder of a division or equation. Then there are logical operators like and, or, and not. These are just like the logic blocks you use elsewhere in the game, where you can compare two Boolean states. Next are the relational operators. These are greater than, less than, equal to, and not equal to. There is, of course, also greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. These will always return either true or false. The next operator is for concatenation, which is the fancy way to say you're combining strings. These two dots combine car and wash to car wash. It can also be used with numbers and variables. So if you'd like, you can print car and model, or count, and then a number. And finally, there is the length operator, which gets the length of the data, whether that is a string or a table. It cannot, however, be used on numbers or bools. It is also important to note that there is an order as to what operators will be executed first. Here is how the ordering goes. These orders can, of course, be modified by using parentheses. The if statement is extremely useful and is what you use when checking if a statement is either true or false. For example, if x is greater than 0, any code in here would be executed. You can also check for multiple statements by using and, or, and not. Here's an example where x or y have to be greater than 0. You can also check for different cases using else if and else. For example, you can check if x is greater than 0 and then using else if, which can be thought of as meaning or, roughly, you can check if x is less than 0. Then you can include an else, so if neither if or else if are true, then the code following else will be run. So if x equals 0, which is obviously neither less than or greater than 0, this code will be run. Here are a couple examples of how the if statement works. Now you may have noticed when you first open up the Lua logic block in Stoneworks, there are two functions, on tick and on draw. But we are focused on on tick for this first video. The on tick function is executed every in-game tick, which is approximately 60 times per second, but this can vary on the performance of the game. This is where you will put your code that needs to be constantly updated. Now you can also make your own functions as well, like so. They can also receive data, like this, as well as return data, like this. Remember when I mentioned local variables? Well, this is where they really come into play. Say I make this variable a local one. That means it can only be accessed from within this function. So if I try to print its value out here, it will be undefined. Here is an example of a function that receives a number, divides it by 2, and returns it. Functions help when there are repetitive tasks that can be completed with the same code. In order to receive numbers and bools that we have attached to the Lua block, remember this, we have to use input to get those values into our script. So now we have assigned my num the value of the number 1 number channel, and we have assigned my bool the value of the number 3 bool channel. Even if you don't send values on these channels, the values will default to 0 for numbers and false for bools. Outputs are very similar. Here we are outputting the number 50 on the number 1 channel, and we are also outputting true to the number 3 bool channel. Now both inputs and outputs have to be inside the onTick function, and they will cause errors when put outside of the onTick function. However, they can be put in your custom functions that are called from onTick, like so. Now for the last of the basics we're going to get to in this episode before getting back to our fuel tank example. Loops. The for loop can be used to loop through some code a set amount of times. The for loop has an index, maximum number of loops, and an increment or step value, which is how much each loop will increment your index. In this example, the loop starts at 1 and increases by 2 until it reaches 10. 
So it will execute the code inside the loop in one tick until it has looped five times. If you omit the step value, it will default to one. Here's an example of that. The next loop is the while loop. A while loop like this one will keep repeating the code inside it until the statement is no longer true. So this example will keep repeating the code inside until x is no longer greater than zero. Make sure that your statement is not permanently true because that means it will keep running forever and blue screen your script in game once it exceeds the script timeout of 1000 milliseconds. Now, Lua and Stormworks comes with a fair amount of disadvantages over the logic blocks of microcontrollers. Firstly, there are a couple ticks of lag introduced when data is converted to composite. Secondly, there is a 4096 character limit for your Lua scripts, meaning sometimes it can be better to accomplish some tasks outside of Lua. The character limit is something you always have to be mindful of, but luckily there are ways to deal with it, like splitting your Lua script into multiple script blocks in the microcontroller and using the minifier on the Stormworks IDE site to shorten your code but I suggest keeping a non-minified version of your code saved somewhere. Thirdly, and probably most disappointingly, there is a lot of desync between players in an online match when using Lua-defined variables and drawing to the screen. Usually it works fine when drawing something like velocity to a screen, because the velocity is synced with all players outside of the Lua. However, if you define a variable and alter its value in the Lua, it can cause issues in multiplayer. For example, if you have a button on a screen that toggles a light, one person can see the light on, and another could see the light off or even flashing. Using math.random can also cause a lot of issues. Lua does have its advantages though, like being able to be executed all in one tick. You may not know this, but each logic block in a microcontroller adds one tick of lag, as only one block in the chain is executed per tick. This can cause some issues with timing, but luckily, Lua doesn't have this issue, as on tick is executed all in one tick. Lua obviously also allows you to draw to screens, but it is also able to handle lots of data using tables, something that can be very hard with logic blocks. Trust me, I know. Now, back to the fuel tank example. Quick warning, the script I'm about to show you is for learning the basics of Stoneworks Lua only, and there are much better ways to accomplish what this script does. Anyways, I've made this very simple script. Starting at the top, you can see I have declared my function for turning off fuel pumps, but we'll come back to this in a minute. Next, you can see I define a table called fuel pumps and set all the four values to false. Then, in on tick, I receive the fuel amount and fuel capacity from the fluid meter. Then, I calculate the total fuel by dividing the amount by the capacity giving me a value from 1 being full and 0 being empty. Next, I check to see if there's more than 0 fuel. If there is, I set the first value in the fuel pumps table to true. These brackets are used as selectors to select the first value in the table. If the fuel is not greater than 0, then I call my function to turn off all the fuel pumps. Next, I output the fuel total variable on the number 1 number channel. And finally, I use a for loop to loop through all the values inside my fuel pumps table and I'll put their value. You can see the loop starts at 1 and counts up by 1 until it reaches the length of the table, which in this case is 4. So in the case of the first loop, it outputs the value from the table on channel 1. You can find the simple script linked in the description if you'd like to have a look at it. Now there is a lot more to cover, including, but not limited to, the entire math library that contains all kinds of useful mathematical operations. We'll get to these in the next episode though, where we'll be learning how to draw to the screen.